All right, welcome back away from business and economic matters. We will be focusing on something that is affecting almost every Nigerian as we speak. That's insecurity. All right, the River State Governor, Nisam Wiki, has imposed a dusk to dawn curfew on every part of the state. The reason for that is the spate of attacks and security installations in the state. Police stations, uh, police officers and soldiers have been the target of violent and fatal attacks in River State and part of the Southeast in recent weeks. Governor Wiki says the curfew is until further notice. In view of what is going on, therefore, and its implications to the security of the state and citizens, and in discharge of our constitutional responsibility in that regard, the government of River State has decided to restrict night movements into and out of the state from the land borders of the state. Consequently, a night curfew is thereby imposed and no person or vehicle is allowed into and out of River State from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. from tomorrow, 28 April 2021, until further notice. Okay, that was the governor of River State, Nisum Wiki, bringing the rest in top to speed uh, concerning the state of security in that particular state and, of course, uh, what they need to do and what is to be expected. A dusk to don't curfew, Aneta. Yes, uh, Justin. This security situation in Nigeria, you know, when people think, you know, assumed that this was just in the north, in recent time we've seen in states in the south, south states in the southeast, there's been a heightened, you know, spree of insecurity. Let's, you know, give 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 us a chronological view. We've seen jailbreaks, first of all, attacks on police stations, attacks on correctional centers. You know, Nigeria was thrown was thrown into chaos. Yeah. You know, recalling a few weeks back when we saw those those attacks on those police stations. You know. We didn't know who was responsible. Nobody mm. took responsibility. But we saw how security agencies were quick to point to, you know, mm. figures and groups in the southeast yes. like IPOB, IPOB, you know, indigenous people of Biafra, Eastern Security Network, BSN. saying they were responsible for those, mm. you know, press releases back and forth, yes. those groups denying that. You know, we saw lots of that. We had, you know, on the breakfast, uh, representatives of Ohaneze Indigbo talking about the insecurity in the South, South and Southeast mm. part of Nigeria. And then weeks later, we're seeing what's happening in River in State. State. You're seeing that, you know, unknown gunmen are basically attacking police stations in River State, attacking police posts, attacking security officers. Yeah. The news broke just three days ago about two or three customs officers killed. killed. You know, there's just been a lot. It, it, is, it, is, it is really, really alarming. And what worries me right now is that uh, uh, those in charge of security are seemingly reactive instead of being proactive because uh, this should have been a wake-up call. When we had the first uh, jailbreak uh, sometime last month in Emo State where security formations were being attacked uh, you know they should have uh, upped their games they should have uh, maybe installed CCTV or, uh, or any other uh, things they need to install to make sure that uh, they can actually monitor this situation not that after each attack they will now come and start uh, doing investigation they should be able to do their own intelligence and uh, you know find out uh, what poss possibility there could be in another uh, state and uh, of course I know that the southeastern governors have met twice and now they are fronting uh, a group called uh, the, you know, Ebu Beago, uh, which is uh, the glory of uh, the tiger. My issue is that uh, when issues of security, you know, arise in Nigeria, the police authorities, the security uh, agencies are more reactionary instead of being very proactive. Indeed, Justin, when we talk about proactive security, this is something we need to take very seriously. Take, for example, you know, since we're talking security and the general mm. security in Nigeria, you have the Kankara kidnappings, and the president says this will be the last. You have the Kagara, he says this will be the last. Promises. You have the Jangibe, he says this will be the last. The Greenfield University kidnapping, mm. this will be the last. Mm. And we keep having a series of insecurity, and you ask yourself, what are the proactive security measures that we should be having? And we definitely cannot have this conversation without talking about regional security, True. state security, state mm. policing. In you know other states, we've seen you know the Amoteko, yes, the, the call. You know people have accused them of you know carrying out extrajudicial killings. There's a conversation about it, carrying arms, you know firearms and all of that. But you've when you listen to the news, you hear you know 
instances where Amoteku have actually forestalled an attack, prevented an attack, mm. you know, arrested people who seem to, you know, want to trouble, uh, you know, residents of the state. And what we've heard about the Ibubayagu, there's, there's quite a, an opposition to it. Mm. But, you know, South's governors have all come together, endorse this. You know, we just can't wait to see where this will lead because it seems that, you know, when you listen to analysts speak, they mm. say people and states need to make security localized mm. you can't wait people for people have to be involved in their own exactly. security exactly talking about community policing you can't yeah. wait for the federal government all the time to secure you if you're the governor of the state you're responsible for the security of you know the lives and property in your state so state governors should be able to i mean look at what mr gd johnson spoke about earlier mm -hmm. when we did off the press he spoke about how it's important for governors to collaborate among themselves mm -hmm. and find a solution. To, come, to forge a common Exactly. Front. Instead of running to the federal government, running to ASOROC every other time. You know, so proactive security, regional security, these yeah. are very important issues. I, I don't think that when these conversations come up, the federal government should dismiss it and say, these yeah. are states trying to break away. This uh, is just yes. a pretext to, you know, secede out of Nigeria. We should look at it from the and perspective that and when security is localized, yes. everybody feels that they have a role There's to play. There's a stake to it. You exactly. Know? But another thing that is also worrisome is the issue of um, politicization of all of these uh, security uh, challenges that we have in Nigeria. You talked about uh, what happened in the southeastern part of the country. You know, the, the former IG was quick to blame the IPOB and the ESN. Mm -hmm. And the, ES, um, the ESN and the IPOB, you know, they have come out to say that they are not responsible. And uh, the governor of Imo State, you know, Hope Uzodima, was also in the news, and he said that uh, these particular killings across the south is is politically motivated. Yes, I, I did watch him speak, you know, one of the news channels that period when it happened, especially when his house was attacked by oh. hoodlums. Arsonists set fire to his house. In, in the video I saw on social media, such a sad situation. A police officer lying dead. He had been killed. You know, we saw people, you know, clad in black, black outfits, black masks. You know, they had gone to his house to attack him. And, you know, reacting to this on, on TV, he said that he feels that this is a politically motivated attack mm -hmm. and not just an attack on Imo State, but also on the federal government. So really, now why would anyone just want to you know, motivate people to kill themselves or to kill uh, other people? And or, what what is there to gain? I from, really would never you know, understand from, that logic. From, from orchestrating killings, I would never you know. understand that myself, Justin. But these are these are key issues, and I think one one thing that's very important to note regarding this is what the current governor of River State, Yesamwiki, mm. is doing about this. You know, when you talk about Benue State, we've seen the sad and unfortunate incidents, the deaths, the destruction in Benue State at the moment. I mean, we saw a picture just on the front page of the Punch mm. newspaper a day or two, lifeless bodies on the ground just and people route. just standing. You know, and you, you have been seeing uh, Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn in recent times speaking up against this. He's been condemning the president, you mm. know, and, you know, like we saw on the newspapers this morning, President Muhammadu Buhari responding to this through his media aid, mm. you know, saying that Autumn is antagonizing him and that he was sad about the whole incident. Mm. You know, so I feel that, you know, people should begin to do what Yes and Wiki is doing. Rather than just speak out in condemnation, let's see you act. Yes and Wiki has done something here. Mm. He has declared a curfew you know, on his yeah. state. So within certain times, you should not, <coughs> you should not be seen it. out and about in the state. Okay. So if other state governors begin to take actions like this, you know, declare a curfew, declare a state of emergency, let's see proactive security, mm. let's see state policing, I believe that, you know, it will make Nigeria a lot more safer. Uh, it should, it should, because, uh, you know, even imposing um, a dusk to dawn curfew, there are, you know, implications to that, in as much as uh, you want to keep residents safe, uh, safe, you know, and secure, you know, it also affects uh, the economy of your state uh, in the long run. All right, I'll be talking more on uh, the state of uh, security in Nigeria in a moment when we come back from this quick break to join us again. In view of what is going on, therefore, and its implications to the security of the state and citizens, and in discharge of our constitutional responsibility in that regard, the government of River State has decided to restrict night movements into and out of the state from the land borders of the state. Consequently, a night curfew is thereby imposed, and no person or vehicle is allowed into and out of River State from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m from tomorrow, 28 April, 2021, on the further notice. 
Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're still on the conversation of security in the South South, generally in Nigeria, but specifically in River State. And to continue our conversation, we've invited Mr. Dagatola. He's a spokesman for the Movement for Socialist Alternative. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Well, uh, good morning, all. And um, it's a very topical uh, topic for all of us. Uh, the death state of our country uh, and the critical uh, growing insecurity, not just in the East, clearly in all parts of the country. Uh, we thought Boko Haram was a phenomenon restricted to part of the northern part of the country, but we are seeing synapse of the same phenomenon growing in all clear other regions of the country, and, and this is becoming alarming uh, <coughs> for uh, all of us. And, and you, you, Nigerians have now been informed that a coffee has been imposed specifically in, uh, in River State. Uh, how do we begin to react to this as an immediate measure to halt the state of insecurity that is becoming all right, a Mr. Tola, if you can hear us. Uh, to all Nigerians. But the truth is that all right, Mr. Tola, it doesn't address... We've got your introduction. Thank you so much, Mr. Tola. But right now, this issue of uh, security uh, did not just start in River State. Uh, it has been alarming, and it has been across the south uh, eastern region. You know, with the South Governors meeting, you know, to call for regional security. But was it surprising that right now it is uh, moving towards River State? Uh, how come the security apparatus in that particular um, area are not being proactive enough? Yeah, we, the, 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 the entire rank and file of the police and the military are completely demoralized. Uh, the mass huge level of mass unemployment in the country is one factor we can't also ignore. And the, entire, the, the fact that governments demonstrate to all Nigerians that they have imposed a coffee on themselves to not respond to the situation that is happening in this country. And, 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 and this is why even this coffee that has been imposed in River State currently does not fundamentally address, does not go to the very root of what is responsible for the growing insecurity in Nigeria. <coughs> we want to say that uh, Nigerians will more than be happy to see government take appropriate steps. But how do you begin to confront an armed group when Nigerians, some sections of Nigerians are harming themselves to take up positions which ultimately will not resolve the fundamental crisis that is that is plaguing us as a nation. Well, uh, we don't support acts of terror. Why we don't support that particular measure? We are not unmindful of the fact that government itself, with, the, with its policies and programs, are responsible for this death state of insecurity in all of the country. All right, Mr. Tola, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, I, I, I understand your concerns, but it seems that WK is the only governor right now to have taken such a measure. Others, like we've seen Autumn, you know, they've been criticizing the governor speaking speaking in public. But yes, WK here has taken a stand to declare a curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. the next morning. You don't think he deserves some kudos for that? Or what else or what more should the state begin to do? government is waking up to its responsibility. I don't think what we should be doing is applauding them, but stating all of the failures that have occurred, you know, that they should have reacted to up to this point. And we, we, we must also understand the state of, Niger of, of the state of Nigerian military. There are those who have raised the question of restructuring. While we are not fundamentally opposed to restructuring the Nigerian state, we think more than ever before that Nigerians must be allowed to discuss the fact of this country. Do we want to continue to be Nigerians? Do we want a united country? On what basis would Nigeria continue to exist as a country for all of us? What will be the responsibility of government to its citizens? What will be the role of the police and the military in a Nigerian federation? Working people in Nigeria want to be part of the process of deciding all of these key crucial issues. And this federal government, the Bwari regime, cannot continue to wish away the fact that Nigerians want to discuss the continued existence of Nigeria. Okay, um, and I must tell you that Nigerians want to continue to be like, want to continue to be Nigerians. Unfortunately, those who have decided to hold power to deny the mass of the working people the opportunity to have themselves come to power and build a better country for all Nigerians, unmindful of where they are, unmindful of where they born, unmindful of where they are born, where they live, and where they come from. 
are responsible for these current situations where some sections of the Nigerian people are beginning to think that if this country is broken away, that uh, life will be better for each and every one of all of us. We want to go on record to say that Nigeria can walk, but the only Nigerian that can walk ultimately from this crisis that is confronting us is a Nigerian that will be governed by the working people themselves. Mm. A country where the resources of this country will be used to ensure that education is accessible to all. It is scandalous that when you look at the figure of unemployment in Nigeria today, it's, it's indeed alarming. At no time in the history of this country have you had such good millions of young people with practically nothing to do, no future, no expectations. The economy has degraded to a zero state. A situation where the resources of this country cannot be used to provide electricity. Ajakuta has been closed down. Refineries are not working. All the key functional sectors of the economy that will provide jobs for young people to do are not functioning. So, I'm Mr. Chola, Mr. Chola, would you, would you trace, would you say, Mr. Chola, if you can hear me, you've mentioned some of the key challenges facing our country, and, and I want to, you know, relate all this back to the security challenge, especially in rivers. So, Mr. Chola, if you can hear me, would you say these are some of the reasons why gunmen in recent time in river states have been going on rampage? I mean, we see a press release here from the government outlining all the security challenges in rivers. They say 24th of April, Saturday, customs officers, police, members of the Civil Defense Corps, they were ambushed at their, at their post, they were killed. The next day, Sunday, April 25th, we saw another deadly attack in River State. You know, men of the Nigerian army right in their police posts in Abwa town, in the Abwa Odua local government area were also killed. So there's been lots of attacks on security officers. So would you say those are the origins and why specifically security agencies? Why these attacks specifically, you know, targeted at security officers in River State? I think we should all join together, journalists, activists, all of us join together and Nigerians in our majority join together to condemn these attacks. Uh, we do not support terrorism. Okay. We don't think this will ultimately resolve any of the issues. Rank and file policemen and soldiers and Nigerians, we are suffering the same situations all of us are suffering. So no sections of individuals should now think that when they launch their guns on police stations and ordinary rank and file policemen, that the contradictions that confront all of us will be resolved in any way. So we, we come all out to condemn this and say that those who are behind this attack are only adding salt to the existing injury. That what we must all do is to all come together collectively and organize we must be organized. Tomorrow will be workers' day, May Day. What is the response of the NLC, the TUC, to this current situation in the country? This, uh, this is an organization that has the ability to mobilize all Nigerians collectively, or mindful of a different divide, putting up the appropriate concrete program that will resolve the question of insecurity in Nigeria. All right, Mr. Tola. We want to commend uh, the governor, but we are not unmindful of the roots. All right, Mr. Tola, of, our point noted, of, we need of, of to... Of gunmen in a place like River State, politicians themselves... All right, Mr. Tola, our point noted, we understand that, uh, you know, citizens, uh, CSOs, uh, you know, organizations, trade unions need to come out and condemn this particular act. But right now, a curfew has been imposed uh, in River State, a dusk to dawn curfew. You know, that cannot be sustained for a very long time because, indeed, it will affect, uh, you know, the economy of uh, the, that particular state. Uh, Aside exactly. from curfew, aside from curfew, what what next is the is the is the main question? What should be done? What what should be done to ensure that uh, you know security formations are no longer being attacked at uh, rivers, resident and indeed resident across uh, the south uh, south and uh, should be uh, should be able to go to their beds and sleep well after a long day's walk. What do we need to do after curfew? Is curfew the only way out to serve in this issue of our security in River State? I'm extremely very happy that you have posed this question. I think the first thing was made quite clear to all of us is that the Nigerian state, its military, the police cannot be relied upon to provide appropriate security for Nigerians everywhere. So we must begin to popularize the fact that it is a democratic right for Nigerians, you know, to be able to bear arms and protect themselves and protect their community. I've used the word democratically so that we, we, do, we, do, not, we do not have ethnic militias thinking that those people who are not from that place also don't deserve to be what? To be protected. That is the first step. The second step, like you have appropriately pointed out, is that it can be sustained. Even a coffee itself 
imposes more damaging effects on an economy that is already dwindling and collapsing, and, and which is why we must return back to challenging government to address the fundamentals of human existence in Nigerian society. And what are those fundamentals? Nigerians want to be able to ask, ensure that their children go to school, good qualitative school, without having to go and steal, without having to be millionaires, or without having to be, uh, without having to be politicians, senators, governors, or whatever. Even as ordinary Nigerians want to be able to assess free qualitative education, where Nigerians will be taught, will be provided the necessary enlightenment that as human beings, they are democratic rights for all categories of human beings and can live together. Secondly, there's a need to create jobs. There's a need to create jobs. River State itself, which is the odd bed, uh, the whole of the Niger Delta, which is the basis for the survival of Nigeria, the basis of the huge millions of dollars that is earned from oil daily from this country. What has happened to our wealth? How this ruling elite has managed the oil wealth of this country up to this date, and that this wealth cannot, would not have been used to establish the necessary steel industry in Nigeria. The fact that we don't have an Ajakuta, Ajakuta steel rolling mill functioning goes a lot. The fact that we do not have 24 hours electricity in Nigeria is a huge problem that makes individuals who are even running individual business to be able to, work, to survive. These are fundamentals, and as long as government is not ready to address these good fundamentals of the survival and building of a functional economy, the crisis will continue. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that as an oil producing country, Nigeria imports fuel for usage, resulting into a good loss of jobs, the good wealth that uh, and, and right, you have Mr. a Tola, crop of oil, billion oil barrels who are satisfied uh, to make billions of naira from just industry. importing fuel into the country. All right, thank this you so much, Mr. Tola, for your comment and indeed um, all uh, that you have said concerning the spate of uh, uh, security or insecurity rather in uh, River State and indeed across Nigeria. Yes, we, we thank you very much for your time and thoughts. We do hope the government is listening and will begin to act in due course. Thanks again. All right, away from security matters, we will take uh, yet another break. And when we we'll come back on the last lap of the show, we'll be looking at sports. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back.